So when it comes to conformity, the Bible teaches not to be conformed to this world, not to love the world. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Very strong language. But the Bible also teaches us in Romans chapter 8, look at verse 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So while we're not to be conformed to this world, we are to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That that's who we are to be conformed to, and you know that's who we're supposed to be modeling ourselves after. And there's a culture that would teach you know nonconformity in a sense of just I'm not going to follow anyone at all. And even people use you know we use the term sheeple a lot. And usually when you hear the word sheeple, it's referring to people who are just kind of ignorant and just follow whatever. But the Bible does refer refer to Christians as being sheep. And it's not because God wants you ignorant or that you can't think for yourself. But it's because good sheep will listen and follow. And we are to be followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you're a good Christian, you'll be a good sheep in that you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not supposed to just be total nonconformity to everything. And just go your own way and just do your own thing and follow your own heart and not be conformed to anything at all. There are people out there that will teach that and subscribe to that and, and make you think that, oh, that's the right way. I'm not going to listen to any man. I'm not going to listen to any book. I'm not going to listen. You know, that's wicked. Okay, the Bible teaches us that we are to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, we aren't conformed to the world at large, but we need to make sure that we are conforming ourselves to what the Bible says and what the Bible teaches. And, and, you know, if the world is in opposition to that, then, of course, we're not going to follow that. But it has nothing to do with being mindless or, you know, being, being a sheeple because we're stupid or ignorant, but it's being a sheep in the sense that we're going to follow the voice of the good shepherd. And we're going we're gonna to stay close to him because he's going to guide us and he's going to navigate us and he's going to keep us from the evil that's out there. Because that's what a good shepherd does, watch over the sheep. So we are to be conformed to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, turn if you would to Acts chapter 4. We are to be obedient to to the Lord. We are to be conformed to the Lord, and rebellion against the Lord is not tolerated by God. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 22, and Samuel said, At the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Why am I bringing this up? Because if you get too much of an attitude of being a nonconformist, you could end up finding yourself in rebellion to God. And not wanting to conform to the Bible standards, to the Bible's truth, and, and to God's laws. We don't want to go so far as being this nonconformist in anything that all of a sudden now you're finding yourself in rebellion to God, which the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And in the Bible, the sin of witchcraft, being a witch, is the death penalty. Right. So it's not a light thing. It's not something that, you know, like, we joke around about it, but the Bible doesn't, God doesn't joke around about that. And he's saying, you're going to be a rebel. You're going to have stubbornness. It's like iniquity and idolatry. You know, we need to be in, in obedience and submission to the Lord but not to the world. And that's where we draw the difference. We need to make sure that we can maintain that proper balance and that we're not going out of bounds, um, you know, too far with the non-conformity with the world. Obviously, we're, we, don't, we have nothing to do with the, with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Absolutely not. 